Hello, my name's Katie and welcome to my first Halloween. Now you might be wondering, hang on, you're definitely an adult, not a small child, so why have you never celebrated Halloween before? Well, let me tell you the story. As you might have been able to tell from my accent, I'm Australian and in Australia Halloween doesn't really have a long tradition. Um, it's only in the last maybe five to ten years that people have started really getting into it and celebrating it. When I was a kid, very few people did Halloween at all. In my neighborhood there was always that one house that had Halloween decorations, but not many people were into it. There were always Halloween themed decorations sold at the supermarket, and as uh, people mentioned it on TV, but it never really caught on here. Also, my mum hated Halloween. Whenever she saw the decorations at the supermarket, she would get really angry and stomp off. And if she saw Halloween being mentioned on TV, sometimes it was on the news so we could see what was happening in other countries, and she would get angry at that too. There were always one or two kids in our neighbourhood that would go trick-or-treating. They would come to our door and my mum would give them a lecture on the Americanization of Australian culture and she would send them away. So I always got the impression that Halloween was bad, there was something wrong with it, and that if I even thought about celebrating it, uh, it would make me a bad Australian girl. So, uh, you know, it just wasn't on the cards for me when I was a kid. When I grew up and I started reading about other cultures, I realised that Halloween is actually influenced by an old European pagan celebration called Samhain. Now, I'm European, my heritage is Dutch, English and Irish, and I realised that Samhain is actually my heritage. And following on from that, you could say that Halloween is as well, because it's actually celebrated in many countries in the world now. And I started to realise that Halloween wasn't bad, it wasn't un-Australian, it's a celebration that has a long tradition, uh, if you go back to Samhain and other uh, harvest festivals, and it's celebrated all over the world. The other factor that always put me off celebrating Halloween was because it's spring right now in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere. I look out the window and the flowers are blooming, the birds are singing, but when I look online at social media everyone's getting obsessed about pumpkins and falling leaves and I get a real sense of, well, cognitive dissociation. I get a real sense of FOMO. You can't even buy pumpkins here right now, they're out of season. Uh, and it's not FOMO actually, it's not fear of missing out, it's actual missing out. Because I have to wait six months before I can access any of that and it was very frustrating. This year, maybe it's a pandemic thing, I don't know, but I started to think, stuff it, I do want to celebrate Halloween. I don't care if it's spring. And then I had the amazing idea of Springoween, a combination of Halloween and spring. Well, when I googled it, it turned out someone else had already thought of it and it's already a thing, but that's okay because I found lots of inspirations of ways that I could combine spring and autumn themes. Because I've missed out on so many Halloweens in the past, I decided to go right back to the beginning. I decided to pretend that I was five years old again, and what would I do if I was celebrating Halloween for the first time? So what are the essential elements of Halloween that every child gets to experience? A costume, trick-or-treating, and maybe a party if their parents are into children's parties. And what are the essential elements of spring? There's Easter, the Easter bunny, Easter eggs, pastels, and a party with perhaps food and crafts. For some reason it seems appropriate to do crafts in spring. The first thing was the costume. Now I brainstormed a little bit and I decided uh, my five-year-old self would probably have most loved to dress up as the Easter bunny because I loved hunting for Easter eggs as a kid and I've seen a lot of pictures as well of children wearing bunny outfits for Halloween so that's what I decided to go with. As for the trick-or-treating, well... To be honest, when I was five years old, I was even more shy than I am now. I probably wouldn't have gone trick-or-treating, to be honest. And then I decided to have a little party at home. Uh, it's also husband's birthday this time of year, so I kind of co-opted his birthday and turned it into a Springoween party. But first, let's go back to the outfit. So when I googled pictures of small children wearing their Halloween outfits, many of their little girls uh, had tutus on, no matter what kind of costume they were supposed to be wearing. And I pined for a tutu. And then I remembered that I'd actually bought this petticoat years ago that I'd never worn uh, and uh, found it in the cupboard. Uh, it's actually the perfect colour for a pastel themed Halloween. It's uh, pastel orange, so I felt like I was halfway there already. I had a few different pairs of leggings, but I thought the purple ones would go quite well with this outfit. And I also had a t-shirt with some nice birds and flowers on it, a nice spring theme. 
I actually happen to have a pair of bunny ears in the house as well and this uh, flower crown Small confession, uh, I used to go shopping a lot for retail therapy and I would buy a lot of things from Daiso and other places and never really had a use for them. Well, it turns out I'm having use for them now, so thank you past me for buying all that random stuff. The only thing I didn't have was a bunny tail. When I looked up pictures of rabbits online, their tails tend not to be round but more kind of elongated, so I went for more, a more realistic bunny tail look even though the rest of my outfit isn't a realistic bunny. But I'm five years old, who cares? That's the kind of thing I would have done. I had some craft stuffing and I pulled a, a huge wadge of that out of my craft bag and it happened to be a nice kind of oval shape. I glued it to a piece of paper. Uh, I tried using glue stick at first but it didn't work, uh, so then I tried using super glue. I thought that worked, but then after I let it dry, I picked it up and it started peeling off the top edge of the piece of paper. So I just stapled that thing on. I figured the staples would be hidden by all the fluff anyway. And then I got a piece of cotton string and I stapled it to the top edge uh, so that I could just tie it around my waist. For the party I ordered some supplies and they arrived just in time on the day before so that was very lucky. I ordered th them from a place called The Party People and um, not sponsored, not paid for at all, just a normal order but they were really great so I'll link them down below. I purchased this haunted house scenery backdrop which I thought was really cool and I painted it pink so that uh, it would be kind of a combination of cute and spooky. I actually ended up having to do three coats of pink and you can still sort of see the black behind it but I thought that looked pretty cool. I did want to put glitter on it as well but I didn't get time. I set up a nice little table display that we could have our party foods at and also do our Easter crafts at. Most of the items are from the party people but husband also bought me uh, an adorable meerkat in a black cloak um, garden gnome uh, which was a surprise and it was so cool. Uh, and I thought that went really well with the display. I also just happened to have a Dias de Muertos themed skull, uh, which I'd bought just randomly a few years ago and it went perfectly. Um, I've liked Dias de Muertos, uh, which is a Mexican tradition that's also celebrated at Halloween. I've liked that for a long time. The themes for that celebration are a lot more bright and floral and I thought that they would feed well into the Halloween slash spring theme. I don't know if it was a mistake or if it was a free gift, but the party people also sent me two sets of strobe lights, which uh, when you switch them on, they flash to simulate lightning and also have a thunder sound. Uh, and they're really cool. So I put one set uh, on the table just behind everything to give it a bit more atmosphere. So here I chose some deviled eggs to make because they, they combine eggs which are a symbol of spring, uh, and the deviled eggs, well, that makes it spooky. Uh, I also have these cheese rings, which are orange, uh, so of course I went for those, and some berries, uh, red and black, to suit the Halloween theme, and also some mango, because they're orange. But berries are actually a spring and summer food, so I thought they would combine the Halloween and Springoween theme pretty well, and they do look kind of spooky. Now that the table was set up, I put on my outfit. Again, I just happened to have in my house some white face paint, which I'd bought a few years ago. I think I was going through a very short-lived goth phase. Uh, but I used that to paint my face white to be a white bunny, but also a little bit of a spooky bunny. And I painted some pink lipstick on my nose and brown eyeliner on my cheeks uh, for the nose and the whiskers of the bunny. I thought the effect was really cute and did some silly poses in it. Uh, it seems to be another Halloween tradition to have photos to look back on in the future that you can cringe at and I certainly think I will with these photos. <laughs> While husband and I were eating our foods and drinking our drinks we swapped stories about uh, when we were kids, uh, some fun things we did and what Halloween or lack of was like for us. Then afterwards we had our spring crafting session. I'd gotten these little puffy sponges that you put into water and they expand out into a bunny. We put them in water but they didn't do anything straight away. I think they take at least 24 hours to puff up. At the moment they look like this. We also happen to have in our house a kit with ceramic paint your own Easter eggs in it. Another thing which we just happened to have bought and hadn't used yet and I thought it was the perfect occasion to use them. So we painted the eggs. They're really beautiful eggs, but the paints were a little bit lacking, so I brought out some paints and brushes of my own. 
embarrassingly even though I'm the artist in the household I thought husband's egg turned out better than mine but that's life. That was it for our little party but we played some board games later on for husband's birthday and I kept my outfit on because I loved it so much and I felt so cute in it. I had a really lovely time on my first Halloween pretending I was five years old again and I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. Next year I might dress as Aunt Hilda but I'll only be six years old so maybe I'll dress as a princess. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, I do hope you'll consider liking or subscribing. But either way, I think you're amazing and I hope you have a great day. Bye. What's the go with this? I don't know. Pastels. I love pastels.